May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Today, the feast of the presentation of Christ in the temple, the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, also known as Candlemas, marks the completion of the season of the Incarnation. Christmas actually comes to an end today. Not on Boxing Day, the 26th of December, not even on Christmas afternoon at about three o'clock, when I notice quite a few people start to remove their decorations. Today is actually the last day in the season in which we offer the sacrifice of the Mass in thanksgiving for the Incarnation. It is marked by this singular event of Mary and Joseph bringing the child Jesus into the temple to give thanks to God for his birth and for the Virgin Mary's purification according to the law of the Lord. And that's one of the elements that is at play in today's gospel. There is the interplay between, and they came to do for him that which was written according to the law of the Lord to offer sacrifice for the child's birth, the law of the Lord, and the grace of God. St. Luke carefully weaves together in his gospel narrative contrasts to highlight that this is the light to lighten the nations, the Gentiles, and to be the glory of God's people, Israel. Another element, if we are alert and paying attention to some of the carefully nuanced phrasing, is the play between age and youth the newborn child, the infant Christ, and the ancient Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. Phanuel quite literally means the face of the Lord, a prophetess who went before the face of the Lord. And what happens with Simeon? He takes the child in his arms and gazes into the countenance of the babe and realizes that in some particular way this is none other than the countenance of God himself. What was it we were taught in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, that no one could look upon the face of God and live. Simeon echoes those words. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. I have seen thy face. I can now die in peace. So this interplay between the ever ancient and the ever new. Each new generation needs to hear the message of the presence of God in our world. We need to adapt, to change, to grow, and to evolve, to proclaim the message of the gospel 
that is ever new, but like Anna, we must also heed the wisdom of the ancients, their commitment, their constancy, their expectation to find God. It is that contrast between action and contemplation. Simeon, brought by the Spirit into the temple, is of course about action. Anna, who has spent countless years waiting for the presence of God, is about contemplation. They are both able to recognize the Christ, the Lord's anointed, the Messiah. I know that in this place we must do so much. We must engage in so many areas of mission and outreach. But we are also called to waste time. To worship. Not to do. To sit. To kneel. To pray. Not the things that the world outside tells us we should be doing all the time, rushing around, getting busy, filling our diaries with so many events, but wasting time for God. That is why liturgy, worship, prayer, meditation, that with which we engage every day in this place is in fact revolutionary. It does not, of course, have any value in the eyes of the world, but it changes the entire orientation of who we are, of what we expect, not only of God, but of ourselves. There is no mistake, St. Luke very deliberately uses the word Simeon, which is almost identical in Greek to the word Samion, sign. It is only by our witness to the presence, to the countenance of God as a sign in our world that there is healing and grace and the holy that we can make a difference. May we ever be attentive. May we always heed the holy and respond to that call. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles and to be the glory of thy people Israel. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.